Hello my quilting family. We're here today to teach you how to paper piece a mini churn dash block. The minis are just taking over. They're, they're the cutest thing ever. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a good ruler with fine markings. I've got my 12 and a half or 12 inch by 6 inch Olaf ruler. I have paper scissors paper, scissors, and there's a tag and everything, a pen, cute little fabric bits that you're going to use, and of course, drafting paper. Now, there's other people that post them online, they make PDFs, and then you print them on to fabric, but, or to paper, not fabric, but uh, this we're going to show you how to make one and how to draw it. Okay? We'll be right back. Okay, the first thing we're going to draw is how big this block is going to be unfinished. So these minis, the mini I'm going to show you is going to be three and a half unfinished. So that means we're going to make an outside block three and a half by three and a half. And just line up your lines. Now that's going to be the outside line. So now you want a seam allowance of a quarter inch. And my drafting paper is a quarter inch laid out. So now we're going to just do this. So we're just going to put in our quarter inch seam allowance here. Now we're going to divide this little block into, you've got, um, this is going to be three inches. So the first one is going to be an inch in on both top and bottom, which on this draft paper is four squares. And then it's going to be four squares this way. And four squares this way. Okay. So our triangles on the counterpoints, the out outside points, are going to be like this. So we draw, like we draw in our little uh, half square triangles. So we put them in. And they're really quick to go in. This is not tough. We decided to uh, break up the video between um, actually paper piecing a mini and actually sewing a mini. So now we're finishing up our rails unit. So we have basically the outline of this churn dash here now. So we have basically three sections that we're going to cut, right? And we're going to make sure that this sec this middle section has a a half or a quarter inch on e either side, right? So we're going to number them. So in the middle, it's going to be one, two, three, four, and five. For these outer edges, it's one, two, three, four five, six. That's how you measure them out, right? Because you everything on a paper piece folds outward, right? So here we go. We're going to take this now and we're just going to take one sheet with our paper scissors and cut it out. So now we're going to cut through, and anything without that selvage side, we're going to make sure we leave a good quarter inch on this side as well, right? So we can put this all together. So now that I've got my three pieces that I'm going to paper piece, I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine and I'm roughly cutting what I think I'm going to need. And the pieces are usually oversized when you're cutting, especially when you're cutting scraps. I'm just going to finish cutting the whites. Basically, everything you make it oversized and then you, hang on, you make it a little oversized. So then it's easier to work with, right? So I've got some extra scraps there. I won't. So here we are. We're going to go, and I found this has the cutest little chicken, and I'm going to try and put that little chicken in the middle. So what I'm going to do is usually you have a light open or something along that lines, 
or you can fold where your your lines are so I'm just gonna fold that one over and it's gonna show me now where I should place my chicken because it's got a little dent right so I need my chicken to kind of be in the middle or in between that dent so I'm gonna open up my little pins and because this one stretches right across and I want to center him it stretches right across the block even though this is shy I can still put in I can still put in he's a little shy on this side for a quarter inch but it's okay I can still put in my my uh, part top of my turn dash and all I have to do is see where this lines up right and this lines up because that's where my line is going to be right because it's on that fold right there so now I'm working from the other side this is the side I'm going to sew from so oh I got the wrong foot ah that's okay I'll just change out feet here right away I knew I was forgetting something today oh well makes it interesting I know some people have these sewing machines that they're so quick to change feet on and I prefer one that does a real good flat stitch so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to just put that under the needle now I'm also going to line up my other two pieces here and you know like this that are going in this way now this one two lies the other way so I'm going to make a little fold where one and two have to be just so I can see it from the other side okay so now one and two have to be somewhere in there so I want one to be orange so I'm going to put it down towards that and I'm going to make sure I have a good healthy quarter inch here right so now I'm going to uh, go through this okay lift this up and I just want to sew like a quarter or a quarter of an inch or a little bit more past that this line here on either side there and with when they're this small you can actually hold them together and they'll they work right I mean it's kind of cool how they do that but anyway so uh, healthy quarter inch yes it is there we go oops come on there we go you don't have to backstage or nothing now. Okay, so I'm going to take my scissors and try and snip this. There we go. So now I'm folding back this orange piece. I'm just going to finger press it out of the way for now. And now I want to line up the other orange piece. And I can see that I need just to be a little higher because that's where my fold is you can also do this with freezer paper and I have actually one of the ladies there in our guild did one with uh, how to do these on, fr on freezer paper they were really cool and we could do that as a, another episode but this is how I was taught how to paper a piece so you draw out your little pattern that you want and then you from there you go through so now we're putting on three so we're going to get the next bit here which will be a orange triangles so we're going to pop this open like so and we are uh, so three is here we're just going to put put it back and fold it where three is and we're also going to do four at the same time because it's kind of the same same maneuver there we go just like this we've got two little creases in there so three is going to be a triangle that let's see goes like this so right like that 
because it's going to fold up right like this so we want to make sure we've got good coverage yes we do and we're just going to run this through oh i should probably put it down a little bit more hang on yeah Again, fold this, fold this. Okay, I'm gonna put three on, and three is gonna go on like this, and there. So now it's gonna be like this, right? So you've got your quarter inch, right? Actually, it's a little healthier than a quarter inch, but that's okay. So now I'm just gonna run that one through right behind it. These go really quick once you once you get into the rhythm of it. It's a little slow and tedious now because we're trying to do a few things at once here. Now we're going to fold four, okay, and five in the center. So you see the fold lines. Now you can trim away this if you want, and I have a quarter inch at a quarter ruler, but mostly. What I was taught to do is just trim it off. Rough trim, give it a rough, quick trim. There you know where to put the next piece. Oh dear. And we're gonna sew just like this. one on and it's gonna go like this and I want a quarter inch okay and trim back this to half an or a quarter inch it doesn't have to be precise when you're doing something small like this basically you're doing it to get rid of bulk Right, so last quarter inch piece, and there we go. center and we're going to put the triangles on now for this there you go now you're going to you're going to have some paper ripping here where you're going to pull back your paper to make your fold which is okay and you're just going to pull it back just like that the paper is going to come off of these anyways as soon as you're done right so there you are. So now you take this and you know you've got room here. And you know it's big enough. Yes it is. There we go. And now we're just gonna go from break the paper away from the stitching. There we go. And sometimes it takes a bit to get it pulled, but it works. It does work. This all does work.
Okay, now this piece is done because all of the pieces are now sewn on to the center. And I've got good on either side quarter inch, so I'm good. And I'm just going to put in the last two, the last two triangles. And I always have to laugh. These things never look like anything until you're done. Oh no, I've left this too short. This is perfect time to show you how to stitch, um, use your stitch ripper on these. So this one is obviously too short because it's not going to be able to fold over very well. So you're just going to get in there and you're going to rip it like that and that's it you're done you're good now sometimes that means that now your um, your paper is a little fragile but that's okay it's going to be ripped off anyway you're not going to be saving it you know and let's see does that go up high enough yes it does and that one's done. And I'm gonna run this through. And we put on, check it again. And pull out the excess fluff. Is it high enough? Yes, it is. And now we put on six. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our outside pieces and we're going to sew them to the middle piece. Now we're going to line up those lines again. So there's a couple, this is all just a raggy little mess right now. So what we can do is we can, you know, get a rotary cutter and you know just trim them up so that they don't look quite so raggy and we have a line to follow so what I do is I've got an inch so I just want to go over just a bit and it's going to be a little a little on the thin side of some of these but that's okay and this is way over but that's okay so we just want to line up our our line with that quarter inch and just trim away on both sides. So we're gonna line it up again. So now we have a quarter inch on either side. And now, and this is a little short too. That's okay. I was in a hurry and I was nervous. That's my excuse. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna try and line these up these, we're going to try and line this up the best that we can because we need these lines to, to, to match up. So what we do is we take our pins and we're going to take our pin. The first one we're going to do is the, the line that where we meet the five just below the seam allowance, right? So we're going to press into that one, that one bend just before the seam allowance. And will I bend? Of course not. Okay. And I'm going to bend here and here and here. Now, what we're doing is basically we're giving ourselves markers as to how to pin this together. Right? So when we're, we're pinning this, we're now going to pin it so that this corner here, right there, is going to meet this corner right here. Okay? So this, these two now, when I sew these two together, because the pin is there in the, in the spot we have to, to match, 
is going to match perfectly. But we're also going to put another pin at the bottom. I'm going to pick a pin up today. And I'm going to put it right in the corner of where I need it to be. Right where that first seam is and right where the next seam is. Okay. So now we're going to sew a quick quarter inch down this and it should come together. And we're going to sew right along the edge of the paper too, right? Actually, you can make your own paper piecing things for almost anything. You can see it's kind of turning into a turn dash. And my chicken, my little black chicken might be in the middle. I'm so excited. So, okay. So now we're going to do that again where we match our points. I'm going to just bring our pins over here. Match five to five. Or, you know, as closely as we can to this. And I'm going to get this right. As close as we can there, uh, without stabbing my fingernail. And then we go down to the other side. And there we go. And I put that in right there and right there. Okay. So now, I'm going to line those up the best we can. Okay, and we're going to sew right along the paper. We're going to um, just go around the paper. We're just going to close up all this. Now any like any block that goes together usually as a nine patch you can do. You might have to break it into smaller units but eventually it does measure that perfect. It will measure a perfect thing and you don't have to get crazy insane with all the all the little pieces and all this stuff. It's a very simple thing to do with paper piecing. Now I'm going to make sure I'm at my three and a half mark on this line. Okay, and we'll see here in a bit what this looks like. Okay. And now, we're just going to pull off the papers. And it should show that we've actually done a good job. Like, I'll pull off the rest of the papers. Not on camera, or... If you're doing big projects, I, I go sit and turn on Netflix. But it doesn't really take all that long to pull off all the papers. You know, grandkids are great to help with papers. My husband, God bless him, he's awesome to help out with papers. Now we give it a good flat press and we're at three and a half inches. Perfectly at three and a half inches. So I hope you enjoyed this, but I'll uh, give it a quick press and then we'll show you a little closer. So we gave it a quick press. Isn't it adorable? Oh my goodness. It's just a baby churn dash. So you have to make 16 of them 
to make a 12 and a half inch block. And this is one of the, the block that I made. The next part we're going to do is mini part two with doing it by sewing machine only. This is such a cute little thing. You can use an add a quarter ruler if you want, if you wanted to make sure this was all neat and lovely at the back of your quilt. I've done that where everything's an add a quarter ruler, you know, you trim. But nobody really gets to look in behind your quilt when you're done. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do it. This is the way I was taught to do it. And my little black chicken ended right in the middle, so it's just adorable. So I hope you try this. You can draw your own and you're not limited then by, you know, stuff. You know, get some drafting paper and just see how this works for you. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Become friends with your seam ripper. Reduce your stitch on your sewing machine because that's important because it helps get that paper off when you're done. So, anyways, I hope you do give this a try. It was fun doing this. Okay, see you next time. If you have questions about what you saw in this video or you have ideas for content or something you want to see us do, please put those comments in the description below. But also, while you're there, like, share, and subscribe with your friends. That would really help us out. Okay, I want to thank you and have a great day.